Welcome to my shop. My name is Guy, and today we're going to be looking at Crowley's newest printer, the Ender 3 V3 SE. It's a very long name, but it's a very good printer, so let's take a closer look at it. Let's take a look at the overall specs of this machine. First of all, it's a 220 by 220 bed, means it's 220 in the X and 220 in the Y and 250 millimeters build height. This is a direct drive machine. It uses our Sprite extruder. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. One of the things I really like about this, on the Y, it does use dual linear rods, which is really nice and smooth. All the belts on this, I should also mention, can be tensioned. The base on this is a one-piece injection mold of plastic. I really like the way this looks. It's very clean, it's got some nice curves, instead of that boxy, stamped steel look. Moving around the back of the machine, you can see that it has dual Z-rods. Now this is belted, it doesn't have a second motor, but this is real nice to prevent that X-axis from sagging one side or the other. Another nice thing is retaining clip for the bed. Uh, this is real sturdy and there's not gonna be much chance of this wearing over time and, and causing a short there. Another thing Crowley has done is they've created an all new extrusion for the Z and it's got these really nice injection molded parts for the for the x-axis. This is really super smooth and I really like what they've done here. It gives it a very clean look. Now assembly of this is very very simple. The gantry is all completely assembled right out of the box. You just push it into the base. There's three screws on each side underneath. You plug in a few motor wires and you attach the spool holder and that's it. Maybe, maybe 10 minutes assembly time. Let's take a look underneath the hood. What we've got here for the parts cooling fan is a single 4010 fan. Now there is an automatic bed leveling system. It uses Crowley's own CR Touch, which is right here. This is the hot end cooling fan. It's very small. This is actually a fairly quiet machine. I'll turn it on in a minute. You can hear it. And it does use their Sprite extruder, which is almost on all their machines now. Now this does use a breakout board because there's a ribbon cable that connects everything to the main board. And these are the little Pico connectors, which again, I really hate, but they have to make it small to fit on this. So it does make it easy if you want to do any mods to this. Although I don't really know if you need to do any mods to this machine. Again, that's something else we're going to talk about. I've got the machine flipped on its back and I've got the bottom cover off so you can see what's going on underneath here. Here's the mainboard cooling fan, the mainboard itself, the Y motor, and the power supply. Very clean. Uh, everything is terminated properly. Let's take a closer look at the motherboard. Well, here's a closer look at the main board. There's really not a whole lot to see here, to be honest with you. There are some extra connections. Some are marked for a different display, um, a different Z motor. I'm sure they're gonna use this board in other machines later on if they haven't used it already. Uh, these are connections for some of the electronics in the machine, and this is the connector for the display. Now, I've been talking a lot about what this machine has. I want to talk about one of the things that's notably absent in this machine, and that's the big leveling knobs that are usually underneath these beds to help level the bed. It does have automatic bed leveling, but it uses just screws to screw the bed down to the carriage. And underneath this point right here, there's a single load cell that helps do the Z offset. So there's no bed leveling, there's no setting the Z offset. It's very, very sweet. Located on the side of the machine is this full color LCD display. Let's turn it on for the first time. So let's walk through the setup of this machine. First I'm going to select my language, which is English, and then I'm greeted with this. What I need to do first is level the bed. I'm going to hit leveling and it's going to go through its process. First it's going to heat the nozzle, then it's to do nozzle cleaning, and then set the Z offset by itself. The nozzle is heated, so now it's going to go through a period of cleaning the nozzle itself. It's just going to wipe it along the bed surface. So now it's checking the auto Z level which is the difference between the CR touch or the automatic bed leveling sensor and the nozzle itself. There it goes over to the load cell. It's 
going to tap on that a couple times and it's going to set the Z offset automatically. After it's completed the Z offset, it's going to go through the process of doing the automatic bed leveling. Well, it's completed the bed leveling, as you see, it did a 16 point. I'm just going to select confirm and that will save it to memory. And that's it. That's all the setup there is. I'm going to load some filament in here. And I've got the filament cut at a nice 45 degrees. So I'm just going to push this down and feed that filament in until it stops. After I've put the filament in, I'm just going to go over to prepare, go down to extrude, and it's going to home the machine and heat up the nozzle and extrude the filament for me. After the machine is homed, as you can see it's heating up the nozzle. It's making sure that I've put the filament in and pushed it to the bottom, and I'm just going to click OK to confirm. And after I've confirmed it, it's going to extrude filament to let me know that it's loaded. So after I've inserted the card, I can just select print. And there's my XYZ calibration cube. I'm just going to select it. I want to confirm it. I can also decide if I want to calibrate the machine again, which I don't want to since I just did. But if I press that, I can calibrate it again. I just want to confirm it. There's a lot of information here on the screen. We actually have the file name, percentage done, tune, pause, and stop, and also the temperature of the different things, so the hot end, the heated bed, and so forth. Well, it's starting to print now. When I sliced it, it said it's going to take about 19 minutes. This machine claims to have 250 millimeters per second speed with 2,500 millimeters squared acceleration. When I slice this with the standard settings with the Creality Slicer, it's, it's printing at about 180 millimeters per second, which is very reasonable. But still, that's about you know three or four times as fast as a regular Ender 3. So it is pretty fast, but it's really quiet too. The only thing I can really hear is the fan that's underneath with the cooling for the main board. So we'll see how it sounds once the uh, parts fan kicks on. All right, the parts fan kicked on. It's still pretty darn quiet. If that's as loud as it gets, I'll be pretty happy. Well, the print is done. It actually took 23 minutes, which is still pretty good. And that's it. Well, I've taken the flexible sheet off the bed and let it cool the room temperature. You get this print off here. Came off pretty easy. One thing about this PC coat, I think it's polycarbonate bed, is it is really sticky. I, I have mixed feelings about these. I'd rather have a PEI sheet, and I really wish Crowley would have included one. But this one is still really good. It's, again, very, very sticky. Let's take a look at the print. Well, here's the cube and uh, looks really good. Here's the top surface. I really don't see a lot of artifacts on it. Layer lines look good. Let's measure this. It's supposed to be 20 millimeters all the way around. So there's the Y. 19.87. There's the X at 19.97. And there's the Z at 19.99. It's actually really close. Now here's some other prints I've done. This is just a simple cylinder and a cube done in base mode. And uh, again, this looks really, really nice. This line right here is where it was going at normal speed. And here I kicked it up to 200% speed to see if I could create any uh, problems. And again, none at all. Perfect layer on the bottom, really, really nice layer lines. The same thing with this cube. Now here's a print of a small garbage can that I made. And again, the layer lines are, are perfect on this. And here's another model that I usually print on FDM printers to test them, which is a Deadpool bust. And uh, again, just really, really good. No supports needed on this. 
The overhangs were good, not perfect, but really, really good for, for this machine. Oops, almost dropped it. And uh, all the details are nice. No stringing between these two swords up on top. Looks really, really good. Now here's a Voron cube that I printed for dimensional accuracy also. And let's take a look at that. So it's 30.10 in the Z. 29.87 in the Y. Let's check the X. 30.12, not bad. But again, this is a sub $200 printer. And uh, that's really, really good. I'm very, very impressed. So is the Ender 3 still viable in today's market of Core XY printers? Absolutely. This is a great, perfect printer for the beginner. It's easy to assemble. It's easy to get set up and printing properly. And it's really easy to slice files and print. A couple things I really like about this printer is it does use a full-size SD card, which is really, really nice. I really like the design of it. It's slim. It's sleek. It looks really good. Um, it's got a great LCD display. It's not a touch screen, but it still works really well. A couple things I like not so much is that it doesn't have wireless on it. Now, this is compatible with Octoprint. I have got it running with it, and it works fine. It's not 100% compatible, but you can still transfer files to the printer and get it to print. I'm really looking forward when Creality uh, puts a profile in their Sonic pad for this where I can run Clipper on it. Another thing I like not so much is the build plate. It's this polycarbonate build plate. It is still a flexible build plate. Stuff sticks to it really well, but I wish they put a PEI build plate on it. I mean, I, how much more does it really cost for the PEI textured plate over this? I don't know. It can't be much, but it really should include it. The other thing is this does have a PTFE lined hot end. It only goes up to 260 degrees. I wish they'd put a full metal hot end on it. For the most part, if you're just printing PLA and PETG on this, it's going to be fine and it's going to work great. All in all, this is a really great printer. Right now, it's uh, less than $200, well, $199 um, at the time of filming. And it's a tremendous value. Again, very easy to use. There's almost no setup. Just hit a few buttons and it goes. You can slice stuff. Just hit a couple buttons and you've got a file. Works really, really well. Uh, if you want a machine that if you're a beginner and you just want to get into 3D printing, this is a great machine for it. Or if you're like me, where you're a hobbyist, this is a great machine that you know that you can just send a print to it and it's going to work and not have any problems with it. You're not going to have to fuss with it all. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.